It's the Ticket Plug. We've been running an online ticket business for over a decade, and now we've created an easy way for you to do the same thing through our private ticket resale community. Joining our community will give you a way to flip your bread and generate profit income consistently. We provide you with all the tools, training, and resources needed to start your life-changing online ticket business. Zero experience needed. To join our ticket resale community, go to theTicketTrap.com. Again, go to theTicketTrap.com. Click the link at the top line of the description to get started right now. Don't wait. My next question, um, who do you think killed or what killed the conscious community? Um, two questions. Do you think it was a scamming that, you know, started at the beginning of the I end? I should get my belt. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, what's your thoughts on Umar Johnson in the school, if you've been following uh, that? <laughs> <laughs> wait, let me get this belt. Sure. It's because I killed yeah. the conscious community. That, that's how I look yeah. at it. I look at it as I killed the conscious community. I killed uh, all of it. Like, and what I mean, what I mean by that is um the conscious community made their living off of um battling the Bible. That's what they made their living off of. And by making their living off of battling the Bible, they had to come in front of everybody that they felt um was about the Bible. And I would be at the helm of it. I would be at the forefront of it. So anytime they wanted to battle, they would come in front of me and they would die. And so <laughs> I would I would definitely take the credit What from now to be biblically sound for all the people that's going to go crazy. I would say the most high did it first. And I would say he used me to actually do it. And so that's how I look at it, because nobody is around. So, yeah. That's that's how I look at that. Now, as far as Umar Johnson with this school, I mean, how long are we going to believe that? Unless y'all know some information that I do not know. Every year, he says, this is the year that we're going to start the school. We're going to open up the school. Um, I actually have brothers in Delaware, and I always, and periodically, I say, hey, man, go by the school. Tell me what's up with it. Is it changed? Is it growing? Is it is it doing that? I get the same answer. There's wow. nothing. I think Umar should finally just come out and say there is no school, but he right. can't because he's going to have to get that money back. You know, that that'll destroy his reputation. He got to he got to have at least one semester. I mean, what has been like six years, <laughs> right? Don't he got to don't he got to have like one semester? Yeah. And, you know, I mean, the other other than that, I don't know what to say. Like he got I mean, it's a failure. And I think I think that what we what we should take as black people is the hustle that comes from it, because who wouldn't want a black school? That sounds good. And Umar Johnson is another one that's an intelligent brother. He knows how to talk. He knows how to galvanize. And we got to add he knows how to hustle. Mm. And that school is the hustle. Now, I'm one that, you know, you're damn near like, OK, what if he bring out the school? Here's how I was in the beginning, like five years ago, whenever it started, I said, well, I don't want to say he ain't going to have the school because this might be the year he got to school. And then I say, well, you know, he said this year, maybe it's this year. Then it's this year. Like how long? It's almost like when the building fund for the church, but you never see the building. <laughs> but 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 they collect where this born. Listen, my mother's church. This is how my mother's church used to shame us. They used to put our names and they used to have like this graph, like how much you gave. And my graph would be all the way down here. Everybody else's graph would be up there. They try to shame you when they're giving money. Yeah. And so damn near what, what Umar is doing is what the church does. He's promising we're going to have a building, but never get the building, but still is collecting funds for the building. So I think Umar Johnson, he should. we should give a Negro wake-up call to all leaders that are um, hustling us. And I think Umar Johnson is one that's hustling, hustling us. That that doesn't take away from whether he's a PhD or not. Doesn't take away from if he's intelligent or not. Um, knows about child psychology or not. But as far as that school goes, that's a lie, from what we've seen thus far. Now, if he presents some miracle school, then we could say, you know what? Good job, Umar. You persevere. But right now, it looks like bullshit. If I was to say it bluntly, that that's what I think about Umar. I think Umar is a perfect segue into kind of the harsh reality and what we live in now in particular with media in particular with hip-hop in particular with our culture as it's seen from the outside looking in when it comes to how fake and phony can turn you into a celebrity because i we, right. we, we laugh and joke about umar a lot now at first we took it kind of like damn you ain't got the school for now he's a bona fide celebrity 
He's Mm -hmm. getting retweeted everywhere. They think he's funny. Oh, he could throw some shit out and some new people that never heard of him. Oh, that's real because he's articulate as hell. And it just kind of shows the fake and phony world that we live in, in particular in what we see in our social media. What's your thoughts on hip hop? Um, And I know that's a very broad question. What's your thoughts on hip hop as it's perceived today in the media that provides the hip hop content for you? What's, What's your overall thoughts on that? Let's start. There. I don't really, I don't really think there is hip hop anymore. If we think about, um, so like J- uh, Jermaine Dupree made an excellent point. Jermaine Dupree, I forget who it was that only sold like twenty one thousand sexy, sexy. Thank you. Sorry about so Jermaine, you. Yeah, yeah, no, no, that's excellent because Jermaine Dupree made an excellent example. I think Sexy Red sold like twenty one thousand copies, and that was applauded. If you did twenty one thousand copies in the nineteen ninety, she was cut. I mean, what? I mean, you a ro- you a you a group of you carrying crates now. You all you gonna do is support the one that's selling the records. You carrying crates now. You doing some type of manual labor to recoup the money that it took to invest in twenty one thousand um, copies. But and if you think about it, for all the popularity that that they're giving Sexy Red, she can't even sell. Like they, they, she, I guarantee you that tour gets canceled. Like, cause I'm seeing all online how nobody wants to go to her shows because from a content creator, from a content perspective, she's extremely popular. She gets all the likes in the world. She gets all that in the world. And a lot of artists are getting that. A lot of artists are getting likes in the world and they're getting social media acceptance in the world. But from a music perspective, we all know it's trash. It's not like, genuine uh music so hip-hop to me and that's what kind of make like the drake and kendrick battle like really kind of invigorated life into hip-hop that's why i was mad i can't even listen to a j cole song i haven't been able to listen to a j cole song since he stepped away from the battle Mm. because i'm dead serious because j cole was boasting about being number one remember it was the big three j cole Mm. kendrick and drake and then when it came time to prove if you was a big three, he backed out. Yeah. So I can't listen to a song where he's saying he the best or he the top and they trying to mimic me and do all of that because you ran away when the battle came. So, mm-hmm. but Drake and Kendrick was like the, the, the dopest reminder of what hip hop used to be. Like they was dropping tracks. They going back and forth. Now I ain't really like the over analyzation. Like you ain't get that back in the day. Like when Jay-Z and Nas battling with Q, right. ain't nobody taking line for line. Well, how do we know this is true? How do we know that's true? How do we know this? Like, you don't get, ain't, ain't right. nobody. Right. If if nobody in rap is telling anything that's true, when right. you think about it, even if you make a regular song and you done unalive like 12 people, nobody thinks you really did that. It's entertainment purposes. So a battle is the same way. Like if you go into battle rap, Battle rap is the same way. Battle rap, they done killed you like twelve thousand times in three rounds. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So on the planet, you know? yeah, <laughs> they like I got a gun so big. I mean, <laughs> they guns don't even exist. Like battle rap guns don't even exist in real, in real life. Yeah. But it's for the entertainment of it. And so that Drake and Kendrick was like the closest to like real hip hop. Like right, right now, all we got is um. Maybe hot song, like you get a hot song, but you're not getting no no real purist type of album. There's no quality content. And it's really the now we gotta get into like the uh who's in charge of putting the music out because that plays a part too. And so the uh video from a while ago when Leah Cohen was talking to uh Charlemagne the guy. Yeah. And Charlemagne was calling Leo a culture vulture. And Leo didn't deny that he was a culture vulture. Give it and he said, I got, you know what I mean? He said, well, you know, I got kids to feed. I got family to feed and stuff like that. Now, what Leo Cohen said was being done in the 90s. You think that stopped? No, that didn't stop. So now it's just a different type of culture vulture. So now what the labels and execs know is that people ain't interested in the album. They're interested into the hype around the individual. So the hype around the individual, she got to put this one song. We're going to move the hype around that song. So they might have a hype song, but they're not investing like they used to invest. And it's so easy now. Anybody can put a song out because you got so many different social media platforms. So I don't really think there's a hip hop and hip hop used to have a lane for everything. 
when the two live crew and NWA was getting played, the X clan public enemy was getting played at the same time and could exist in the same world.